we're going to move on to MailChimp integration with QBO. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to a couple of slides of I took during the setup process. And then I'm going to go inside my MailChimp account. I actually use MailChimp and in QBO and kind of show you how those two things interact. So the first thing I'm going to just go through is that the, the MailChimp QBO integration is marked as beta. So that means it's, it's still work in progress, but as far as I know, it's available to everyone. The app integration lives in MailChimp. That means that you don't, you don't make the connection from QuickBooks, you make the connection from MailChimp. Doesn't make much of a difference at the end, but it's something to, to point out. The integration's free, like there's obviously no cost for the integration, but it requires a, a MailChimp account. You have to have a paying MailChimp account. Uh, it's available in all versions of QBO, so it's not QBO Advance only, thank God. Um, and it's a unidirectional data integration. So you cannot go from MailChimp to QBO, which right now I think is a good thing. Um, but if you use MailChimp for e-commerce, because some people, uh, they, they sell their products and services through MailChimp, that stuff cannot integrate yet. Um, and obviously they need to work on that because that might have been the only real reason to buy MailChimp, you know, is to be able to get the e-commerce business from it. But so far, you can get your QuickBooks customers and send them into MailChimp so you can run campaigns. The data points I've noticed, you can sync name, email, company name, address, phone number, and most importantly, invoice and sales receipt totals. That's the key. That's what makes this different. And we'll discuss that when we do the live demo. So you log into MailChimp, you go into in integrations, click on manage and click on find new integration. You're going to search for QuickBooks, search for QuickBooks. Once you search for QuickBooks, you click on, on, uh, on QuickBooks. Again, if you want to get access to the slides, go into the chat box uh, or the description box uh, and there's a link to download the slides. So those slides are available to you. They are Google slides, so you can download them um, in your computer if you want to. So you click on the on the link that says QuickBooks on it, QuickBooks Online, rather. Then you're gonna click on Connect Now. Pretty simple process. Then you're gonna notice, and when you click on Connect Now, uh, the QuickBooks Online integration beta turns on, and the first thing that it will ask you is select an audience. So if you never used MailChimp before, this really means nothing to you. But if you use MailChimp, you know that you're probably gonna wanna create a separate audience for your QBO customers. Or if you already have an audience for your QBO customers, an audience is basically a group of contacts. For your QBO customers, you can use a an existing one. So generally, I'll create a new audience just for this, and I did for the testing. And then you're gonna see in the bottom, uh, once you go back into the settings, which audience is connected to. So every new QuickBooks customer that gets created, it will be pushed into that MailChimp audience. Once you follow through with the connection, you do the standard app connectivity where you tell it which is a company file and you authorize uh, QuickBooks to connect to MailChimp or, or vice versa. And once you fully connect it, you're gonna go back into that integrations manage setting and you're gonna see in the bottom a progress bar for all those contacts being copied. It took like three minutes for me. And then once it's fully connected, it, it will say test connection. When you see test connection, that means it's fully connected. And in the bottom, it says successfully connected to your QuickBooks online file. Then once it's connected, you're going you're gonna to go into that audience, the QBO important audience that I just created. And you're going to see a big QuickBooks logo with a settings button that will take you back into the integration settings. Now, what's worth pointing out is the lifetime sales of the customers and the average order value, invoice uh, sales receipt value will show up in here. We'll calculate in here. And then in the bottom of the contacts information, it's every single transaction. So you can click on that and it takes you straight into QuickBooks. So let's open that up. So let me go into my, um, let me switch to my company file and then log into MailChimp. It's really, I mean, I've been a MailChimp customer for a very long time, even before, we're talking about 2014 maybe, and before I even fathomed the concept of Intuit buying MailChimp, which is still kind of crazy, um, just conceptually, like what is an accounting software doing with an email marketing company? Um, 
now that I see I'm in, in, integrated, I start seeing, you know what? There's some interesting value here. So anyway, I'm in uh, MailChimp. I, I'm in my audience, my QBO imported customers. And this is that big QuickBooks logo I mentioned to you in settings. This is where you would go and where I sh uh, the same thing I showed you in the screenshot this is where you can uh, come here and change. Uh, I mean, number one, confirm which c connection is uh, the fact that it's connected to a QuickBooks Online file. And this is where you could change the audience that is synced to. Once it's synced, you know, it just it's always going to hit that audience. So right now I can't change it anymore. But if you go back into the slides, you'll see that you had the option to change the audience. So here's my audience. It uh, downloaded 129 contacts from QBO. If I click on that, essentially what I'm going to see, it's all of my QuickBooks Online contacts. Now, what's really cool about this, I'm going to scroll to the right a little bit. Take a look at this uh, column that says revenue. This gives me the revenue of every customer. Now, I can't customize to last year's revenue or last month's revenue or average monthly revenue. This is just lifetime revenue. Would be nice, you know, to be able to kind of change what those columns look like. And if there's a way to do it, I have no clue. But um, here's where you get to choose. And I can, you know, show less information here if I just wanted to kind of see less columns so you can see um, that revenue on one column without me having to scroll. So that's pretty interesting. Now, I, I'm going to show you, I'm going to go into this customer here, this customer, uh, which is basically me, myself, and the revenue. And I'm going to go into QuickBooks Online so we can see where this information is being fed from. So I'm going to go into QuickBooks Online. This is the QuickBooks Online file that is synced. I'm going to go into my customers. So let me go into my customers. And um, I forgot which is the customer for this, but we'll find out in a second. Oh, AAA Construction right here. AAA Construction. So if you look at the history of this customer, let me zoom out a little bit and I do a filter, and I only show, let's say, invoices. So let's do all the invoices and go to apply. You see all these invoices here, this uh, 500,000 worth, that's the information that's coming over. Now I don't know, you know why it says 569 here and why it says uh, 521 here. There might be a limit on the amount of years of data that uh, MailChimp brings. There's no documentation anywhere that tells me exactly uh, which, you know, which years are being looked at. But I can confirm that approximately, right, there's an amount of invoices and sales are coming over. So how is this valuable? Well, this is where, that's a, I guess it's a big question. Like, wh why does it matter? Like, why do I want QuickBooks customers to be in MailChimp? Well, because you could do something interesting, like invoicing a particular select group of your customers. So I can, go to new, I can go to a new segment and say, you know what? I'm going to invoice all my customers that have spent a total of more than, let's say, $100, right? And then I go to preview segment, and then out of the 130 contacts, it went uh, down to 30. So now I can send them a different message that someone that hasn't spent any money or spend less than $100. Or I can go the other way. I can go to edit segment and I can put um, spent a total of less than, let's say, $20. So any customers that spend less than $20, there's 46. So I can now send them an email with a particularly different message. So again, you can, based on that information, and it's not enough, I, I wish you could bring more information like a uh, number of jobs or again, average, average monthly invoicing or last time we invoiced them. None of this information, it's in here. Like I don't have, you know, last invoice date. That would be, or could it, let's see. Uh, purchase date, let's do that. So purchase date is after. So in this case, it's not last purchase date. So th oh, this will tell me only if the customer purchased. So let's say, Let's experiment here. So purchase date, not within the last, let's say, 90 days. As a matter of fact, I think this might be what I was saying. It didn't do it, but it does do it. Uh, purchase date, not within the last 90 days. So if I hit preview, it tells me all the customers that have not bought from me 
in the, okay, so this is actually great. Let's do 30 days and go to preview segment, 129. Let's say they haven't bought for me purchase, not within 30 days, right? That means what about in the last, let's say 100 days? Some ones I haven't purchased, so I'm not sure if this is working. Let's say uh, 365 days, so if they haven't bought from me in the past year. Okay, yeah, so it is, it seems to be working. I don't know this sample file with a bunch of data, who knows? You know how accurate this is, but 40 contacts right here is the number of customers that haven't bought from me in a year. Again, and I have the information here, I would save the segment, create a campaign, and email all of them. But it is. But yes, this is just really, really, really cool, I think. It's really, really cool.